Beautiful day here in Northamptonshire between uh, Christmas and New Year and uh, yesterday uh, I took the, uh, the Monster R out and decided just to do a little bit of assessment on the, uh, the capabilities uh, of the uh, GoPro Max as a motorcycle vlogging camera. I've seen a number of um, offerings up on uh, YouTube already and clearly the, uh, the science is uh, developing. The, uh, the Max is a, a very new camera actually so 500 quid you've got to shell out for one of these uh, and for me um, for over the last two years I've been using the Drift Ghost S and the, uh, the, the Drift Ghost X and getting a really good value out of those but just felt I wanted to do a little, something a little bit different so in particular to explore the uh, the 360 degree capability of the uh, of the Max and also get a little bit higher resolution and start to play around with some of the frame rates so over the next half an hour or so I'll take you through my uh, first impressions of the uh, of the GoPro Max as a motorcycle vlogging camera put up a little bit of footage for you first of all I'll take you through my camera setup on the bike the way I uh, install the cameras and look at tethers and so forth and uh, how, how, what I've, I suppose what I've learned over the last couple of years uh, we'll then get actually out on the bike we'll look at the uh, what's, what's known as the hero mode which is a sort of standard GoPro mode because with the Max in effect you get two cameras in one then we'll look at the uh, what we call the 360 reframing mode uh, we won't look at full 360 virtual reality mode today simply because the, I'll have to post a different kind of a video to actually do that but I shall put one of those up soon uh, and then I'll give you just my initial thoughts over the, uh, the last two weeks as to five positives and five negatives of the GoPro Max as a motorcycle vlogging camera. So, so uh, sit down, make yourself comfortable, make yourself a brew and uh, let's get out on the bike and uh, see what you think. Here's my camera rig. So you can see here I've got the, uh, the GoPro Max mounted on uh, a suction mount on the tank. The suction mount is actually um, a legacy from my uh, Drift Ghost S. Uh, and you can see that because I didn't have the right fitting here, I've actually had to um, just use a few uh, cable ties just to lock the, uh, the GoPro uh, shoe into the, uh, the Drift um, uh, setting. It's actually quite solid. Um, the other thing you'll notice here, so that I've got the uh, the suction mount on, um, but also notice I've got these um, bungee cords as well. Uh, and the reason <coughs> that they're there is, uh, is is basically to act as tethers, because uh, obviously if this uh, camera drops off, this is 500 quid's worth. Uh, this is uh, probably another 50, 40 or 50 pounds worth as well. So you don't want to do that. Now I did try just one tether at the front, but I found that just with the one tether at the front, I just did a little bit of experimentation. And once the um, the suction mount comes off, the um, the whole camera assembly could swing, and there was a possibility that it might have got trapped between the front forks and the uh, the radiator there, which might have affected my steering. So I've also elected, therefore, to put a, a rear tether on. So it looks a bit Heath Robinson. I'm sure I'll come up with something a bit smarter in the uh, in longer term, but that uh, that works fine for now. On the back of the bike, okay. So you'll notice I've uh, defaced my beautiful um, Ducati by uh, fitting a. Uh, a shoe on the uh, on in the rear facing position there now the reason I have a rear facing camera is what I try to do when I ride is to try to involve my subscribers as much as possible so I'd like you almost to have the feeling that you're sitting on the pillion with me so I want you to be able to see what's in my rear view mirror so in effect that's what this camera is going to do it's going to give you that uh, that, that sort of perfect uh, rear view as like a little in inset in the bottom right hand corner of the screen um, but also, as well as that, the, uh, the front-facing cameras are going to give you things like speed, uh, gear, gear, gear um, thro thro throttle position and, and so forth, so, uh, so that you can make your own judgments as to what I'm doing or what I'm doing either right or wrong. Okay, so, so here's the... Um, here's the Drift Ghost X, which I bought about 18 months ago. The key I've learnt when fitting this thing is just basically to make sure that these little... Um, tags here are locked in properly and again you'll notice here I've got a, um, a tether now this tether is actually much neater it's it is just literally just a little piece of uh, fishing line so I uh, just got, went onto eBay and got myself some 30 pound fishing line and what I've done just on the rear of the seats I've tucked a little fastener in which I've actually uh, believe it or not just tied to a, a little bit of a thick rope which I then sort of bundled under the seat uh, and then uh, essentially this thing if I can do it one hand I don't know whether I can but uh, Yeah, OK, so that's in now. And you can see now that were that camera to fall off, that's actually tethered quite strongly. And again, I've just tested the, uh, the, the length of this tether, just that if the, if the thing does fall, I know it's only going to fall to about here, it's not going to foul the back wheel or the suspension. So, you know, you must attach a tether, but also just do those safety checks when you do that. So the final part of the jigsaw for me then is my trusty old uh, Drift Ghost S, OK, which you can see here, which is attached to the... Um, 
the side of my helmet so you can see I've got an external microphone here the microphone uh, basically feeds in around the side of the helmet and actually just sits just sits in actually inside that cheek piece there which is the perfect position for it because it uh, shields it from any wind blast but it's right up against my mouth so that I can talk now the reason I'm using this still using the Drift Ghost S is because the uh, the Max is a wonderful camera but the uh, just has a few disadvantages and, and because it's actually a ruggedized outdoor action camera um, were you to, were a GoPro to have actually fitted in um, a uh, a 3.5 mil uh, jack or a sort of a mini USB type jack in there for a microphone, it would have compromised the, the waterproofness of the um, of the camera. So basically, it's got an, it's got the, uh, the 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 Max has excellent surround uh, microphones on it, but you can't. Uh, one of the downsides is you can't actually attach uh, an, an external microphone to it. So you know, for Vox on uh, when you're riding, that's not much use. So so very simply, what I do is I just take the um, I overlay the uh, audio from the Drift Ghost S onto the Max's uh, video output. And that seems to work quite well. So I think, like all these things, it's an evolving science. And I'm sure, you know, a few months from now, I might have evolved that situation. But uh, that's what I'm doing at the moment. And it seems to work quite well. So this is the hero mode. So I've adjusted the picture since last time. Um, I'm now uh, recording at 60 frames a second. And I should be rendering at 60 frames a second. Uh, which basically means that I get... Uh, uh, a much sort of smoother view um, so I don't know if you're aware of this but most uh, movies over the years have been shot at 24 frames a second uh, but when you're shooting action uh, uh, sort of sports 60 frames a second tends to give you a much sort of a smoother um, product and the key is to match the uh, the 60 frames a second when you shoot and the uh, uh, what you actually render the video at in other words when I'm sitting down at my uh, desktop PC and using PowerDirector 15 you get the two to match up you get a much smoother result now the other thing I've done since last time since my previous video uh, when I uh, did my first impressions on the Ducati Monster R uh, is I've actually uh, increased the field of view now so I've got the wide setting uh, on the basis that uh, it just maybe gives you in the uh, armchair a little uh, better sense as to what's going on further to the left and further to the right now the payback for that uh, or rather the downside for that is the fact that uh, you get this sort of slightly distorted fisheye view. So let me know what you think in the comments, whether you prefer the, the, uh, the view from the Ducati Monster R Impressions film, or whether you prefer this uh, wider field of view. Because the whole intention really is that you should be able to accompany me on the ride. Be rather like an IM group. As we're trucking through the village here, you should be able to pick up uh, far more in the periphery on the uh, on the wide angle. So uh, the hero mode is typically uh, on a standard GoPro battery. It's going to give you about an hour, an hour and three quarters worth of uh, uh, footage. is limited to 1080p but to be honest for me that's not a problem because I wouldn't be shooting in 4k anyway So here we are in 360 mode for the first time. I'm 
Now, there are two ways of using 360 footage. Uh, so the first uh, method is called reframing. The second method is the, uh, uh, in effect, the sort of virtual reality goggles version, which I'll show in a later video. So in terms of reframing, basically what the camera is now doing, it's got a 180 degree uh, camera that points forward, 180 degree camera that points backwards or virtually. And then within the camera, the camera is very clever, it stitches those two bits of film together to essentially give you the uh, 360 degree um, view. Now, obviously with the human eye you can't see 360 degrees all around you. Um, so what you then do is at the desktop, you then sit down and you do something called reframing, which essentially allows you to take um, whatever aspect you want from that picture. So let's say I want to point it back at myself as the rider. Or let's say I want to point it down at the, uh, the dash. I want to look right. Or I want to look left. Or most of the time, obviously in, uh, when you're motorcycle vlogging, is straight down the road. But again, useful information for those who are sort of sitting in the armchair watching the video is, uh, you know, sometimes my head movement. Am I checking my lifesavers, my mirrors? What does that look like? So it's all useful information. So I'm just experimenting with this at the moment. This is the primary reason I bought this camera, because I felt that uh, this is now the way to go. I almost feel that this uh, sort of 360 degree option now uh, is as much a jump in camera technology as was um, basically uh, black and white to colour. So uh, anyway, you see what you think. But I think this is the way forward. So I've, uh, I've got to say, I've noticed uh, a number of, um, well, I've watched a number of uh, motorcycle videos uh, from around the world with people with the GoPro Max, and I must be honest, honest some of it makes my uh, sort of hair stand on end really, or what little hair I've got. When you look at some of the contraptions, people attaching poles to motorcycles and the cameras on the end of the pole to get a proper 360 degree view, well it gives a great footage, but it just sort of feels rather like you're riding along with a spear sticking out. certainly pulls and that's only in uh, urban mode, 100 horsepower, I don't know what it's going to do in uh, touring or sports mode. Positives and negatives about the GoPro Max. Okay, so I've had the camera now uh, a couple of weeks or so. Um, so I'm very much a GoPro newbie. I've, I've, I've really been committed to the uh, the drifts uh, up to now. I, I really like the um, just you know just a quick word on the drift cameras. The Drift Ghost S has been a superb camera. It's, it's, it's what I've done my first sort of two years of filming on. It's uh, it's compact. Uh, it's aerodynamic. It doesn't it doesn't make you look like a Teletubby when you stick it on the side of your helmet, like a lot of um, GoPro users actually do, uh, in my uh, personal opinion. Um, 
and also actually it's relatively cheap. I mean, you buy these drift go sets for a fraction of the price of a GoPro, um, so you know it, it's, it's very much affordable. So, uh, so I do like that. But on, on to the Max itself. Oh, okay, so as I've had the camera uh, a couple of weeks, so I've, I've, I've formed an initial impression of positives and negatives. So uh, let's deal with the negatives first of all. Um, there's no external microphone. Okay, so you cannot plug an external microphone in, which means as a, as a motorcycle vlogger that you have to come up with some other solution for your sort of on-ride, on-the-bike commentary. So for me, that involves um, talking into my Drift Ghost S and then just ripping, up the, uh, ripping out the, uh, the audio from that and overlaying it on the Max uh, video. Um, secondly, uh, it's not particularly easy to uh, externally power the... Uh, the GoPro Max. The GoPro Max does have a USB-C port on it, but in order to access that and in order to charge, you can charge, um, and it will actually charge up faster than the camera discharges when the camera is running. Okay, but you need to take the side door off to do that. Now, when you take the side door off, there is a chance of you losing your battery. Uh, the battery is actually quite a snug fit, so you probably need to fit an elastic band around it or something. But that's a bit Heath Robinson, and again, it would compromise the waterproofness. So essentially what that means is I've, I've already done some, some initial tests and with the, the standard uh, Max battery I reckon that gives me about an hour and three quarters in hero mode. Uh, I understand as well that I've not, but I've not tested this yet but if you, if you run the camera in 360 mode it tends to burn up uh, more energy so you're probably uh, shortening the battery life there. Uh, I, uh, the, the, the third negative for the GoPro uh, Max uh, is the, uh, is the um, uh, I, I think the poor Android support. Uh, so I've got a, a three-year-old uh, LG G5 mobile phone, so it's relatively modern, it's got all the bells and whistles on it, but it's only three years old. Uh, LG have now stopped supporting that camera in terms of software upgrades, which means that my Android version is capped at Android 6, and that means I cannot download the, the GoPro Max uh, or, or the GoPro Quick uh, software, which allows you to do um, uh, Editing, uh, uh, post editing on your on, on your actual mobile phone. So you'll see there's an awful lot of video on YouTube of people, you know, young kids doing this on their uh, on their iPhone iPhones and doing it successfully. You can't do that. Certainly can't do that on my Android phone. You might look at that on other people. So I'd be interested in your views on that. Uh, the fourth negative for the Max um, is the fact that uh, at the moment there is no desktop Windows software for editing the Max's 360 degree uh, output. Um, there is one uh, bit of software you can download, it's called the GoPro Max Exporter, which enables you to take um, 360 degree uh, footage off the Max, convert it into a, um, a readable MP4 uh, format, which for example then I can then edit on my uh, PowerDirector 15 uh, using its, uh, its own stuff software. And uh, whilst I won't cover that on this ride, I'll actually show you in a future ride just actually how that looks and it does look pretty stunning to be honest uh, from my initial impressions. And then the final negative on the Max is that because um, it's got this forward and rearward facing camera, um, I think in some way that sort of compromises its image quality. So for example you cannot get 4K on the, on, on the GoPro Max, so for example in hero mode you're limited to 1080p. That said, that's not a problem for me because I wouldn't upload in 4K anyway. I just think the files are too big, to be honest. So, so it's not something that I would uh, I would be doing. So, so for me, none of those negatives are showstoppers. The uh, the external mic's not an issue because I've got another got another solution. Uh, in, in terms of power, well, an hour and three quarters in hero mode. Probably, let's say, I'm, I'm guessing, let's say, an hour and a half or maybe a little bit under an hour and a half in 360 mode um, isn't too much of an issue. And you can always put spare batteries in, can't you? Um, the, the Android support, well, to be honest, I wouldn't be editing 360 material on my phone anyway. That's not what I mean to be honest. I do as much longer video, so I want to do that on the desktop. And with the Windows software, uh, the Windows software will eventually come for the GoPro Max. I've just got to be patient because the camera is so new. So th those are negatives. Now, for me, the fact that that might sound sort of quite, quite downbeat, but actually, I've got to be honest, I'm delighted with this camera. In terms of the positives, um, as you can see now, looking at this footage, just, just check out the horizon level. Uh, and what I mean by that is just check out how flat the horizon is because the camera does that uh, within itself um, and it makes an absolute cracking job of producing a really solid uh, 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 level on the horizon. If you compare that with some of my earlier videos, for example on the, on the Drift Ghost S, you'll see it's just like night and day to be honest. So you're looking at a really rock solid horizon there. 
Uh, the second thing is the level of image stabilisation on the GoPro Max is absolutely stellar. Uh, so again, if you uh, if you look at it a bit on the boat side, you can see just how steady this this image is. But again, again, go onto YouTube and check out some of the runners or cyclists or skateboarders or you know people doing aerobatics or whatever, and you'll you'll find the the level of image stabilisation is absolutely superb. And that's that's just a function of the fact it's taking it's got such a wide field of view. But basically, what the camera can then do is just take a, sli a 16 9 slice through that, 16 9 aspect ratio slice through that, and basically steady it and sort of pick the best out of it and, and, and then produce a really nice version. Now, the third um, positive, which I really like, okay, so you'll see now just a, a appeared on your screen is what I call the telemetry data. So the GoPro um, uh, Max actually contains a GPS, it's got um, various bits of kit in there, I think like accelerometers and so forth. And there's probably at least a dozen bits of uh, uh, or streams of data that you can access and, and play with. Now, again, on the Go on the GoPro Windows software, I am assuming there will be some facility to add gauges uh, and, and various dials on uh, and overlay those on the video. I've got to say, the ones I've seen so far from the um, the Mac version aren't particularly impressive. So what I prefer to do is actually uh, I, I use um, uh, again a little bit of software. Uh, which is provided by GoPro, which I forgot my name of, but I'll stick it up on the screen, um, which uh, allows you to strip, strip out the GPX file. So the GPX file is essentially uh, um, the, uh, the, the data trail of breadcrumbs that your GPS leaves, but actually is, is actually captured by the camera. Now, if you then take that, you then um, basically get hold of a piece of software called Garmin Verb Edit, which is free, actually, uh, and it's a really nice piece of software. It's designed, obviously, for the Garmin Verb, but actually, do you know you can use it with any... Any, any camera and you can use it with any GPS and you can basically stream uh, the two together and then they, you can produce these uh, dials so you can see I've got those up on the screen there and I think they just provide really useful information you know comparing let's say actual readout on my speedo with, with my GPS readout and so forth there's a whole host of different there's probably at least 30 or 40 different dials that you can actually add to the screen so I, I really like that as a bit of a, an OCD freak and uh, I love, just love measuring things and then the final major advantage, I think, for the, uh, the GoPro Max is the fact you're basically buying two cameras in one. So you get the standard hero mode, uh, which, which I, I used on my initial video when I uh, assessed my Ducati Monster R, which you can see there. Uh, and I quite like that. I'm still playing around with frames per second and, and bit rates and so forth, so I, 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 in this video hopefully you can see an improvement in that. But of course the second camera you get is a 360 camera, and again that is absolutely stunning, and, and for me that is the future of motorcycle vlogging, the fact that you can basically sit uh, on the driver's seat in the bike, you know, sitting on the, the comfort of your settee home watching, watching YouTube, and you can pick any view you want, you can look back at the rider's face, you can look right, you can look left, just by scrolling your finger around on the mouse on your, on your keyboard. Um, and then the, I just maybe just one sort of final thing is the fact that the, the camera, the, the GoPro Max is designed as an outdoor action camera, so it's rugged and waterproof. So um, basically loads of um, uh, advantages there, and for me they've far outweigh any, any disadvantage. No, no product you're ever going to buy is going to be perfect and, and you know this whole thing of technology is moving on isn't it.